friends, evidence that the Holy Spirit has worked in a sinner's heart can be seen in three things. The first piece of evidence is this. The Holy Spirit came into the world to bring true conviction of sin. What this means is evidence that the Holy Spirit truly resides in someone is he first shows them what sin is. Not just sin in general as mistakes and things that make you feel bad, but sin as it is defined by the Word of God. The breaking of God's law. The Holy Spirit will show you that you are a sinner who has no self-righteousness or ability to save yourself. The second piece of evidence that the Holy Spirit has worked in a sinner's heart, which I think is the greatest piece of evidence of all, is that that person who sees their sins will go nowhere else to be saved except Jesus himself. You see, many people do get troubled about their sins and they try to make it up by their own obedience, their own righteousness, their church attendance. But friends, evidence the Holy Spirit has changed a heart is you will see sin, you will see God's punishment for sin as it is, but you will also look to the Lord Jesus Christ only to be saved. You will be able to say the words of those hymns, that hymn, nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. The Holy Spirit is opposed to all self-righteousness and attempts to save yourself by your own efforts. The Holy Spirit works in a sinner's heart and immediately sends him to Jesus Christ for that free forgiveness and peace with God that he alone can give us. Now the third and final piece of evidence that the Holy Spirit has worked in a sinner's heart. And a reminder, the first piece of evidence is that they will be genuinely convicted of sin as it is dishonoring to God and deserving of punishment. Second, they will go to Christ for that salvation and they will receive that salvation in full by grace. But now the third and final evidence that a Holy, the Holy Spirit himself has worked in a sinner's heart is this, that you, as a person saved by Jesus now, will have a true desire to honor him and to keep his commandments. Jesus himself said this, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now notice the Lord Jesus did not say, if you keep my commandments, I will save you and love you. But it's quite the opposite. Jesus says, if you love me, if you've been saved by me, it will show in a new desire to honor me and to glorify me and to enjoy me in this life and in the life to come. And so think of the logical order that I laid that out in. We cannot honor God in keeping his commandments unless we first love the Lord Jesus. And we cannot truly love or honor the Lord Jesus unless we first are confident that he has saved us from our sins completely and given us peace with God that will endure in the life to come. And behind that, we cannot come to Christ for that salvation unless we rightly see ourselves as we are, sinners and deserving of punishment. Let us never forget that God is righteous, just, and worthy, and the appropriate punishment that He has determined for all sin is eternity in hell because He is righteous, just, and worthy, and will by no means clear the guilty. And behind it all, my friends, no one will be convicted of their sins unless the Holy Spirit changes their heart. So from the Word of God, we learn today that Christ Himself can baptize with the Holy Spirit, and He only can change.